Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, The Feist, back at it with another Raid Shadow Legends video guide. It's been a while since we've done one, but before we get this started, if it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit it, hit, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. Come join us on Discord. It's the best community ever. It's going to be in the YouTube description below. Come follow us on Twitch. That will also be there. Also, before I uh, start this content, guys, we don't have YouTube monetization, unfortunately. So if you can do me the favor, definitely subscribe to the other channel. Uh, we're trying to see if we can push a thousand subscribers for that. And also, if you wanted to support the channel financially so we could keep making amazing content like this and you want to support the Feist fam, uh, check out the YouTube description below. We have a link for uh, coffee mugs and t-shirts and we have more things on the way. So let's get into this guys we are going to be talking about forgive me on how i pronounce this because i actually don't because i actually never heard someone say it like i'll just say tyrant most of the time but we're going to be talking about tyrant Ixlamor or Lixlamor, whatever I, I say Ixlamor. i don't know if that's an i l l whatever but we're going to be talking about the tyrant today and he is a really good legendary in demon spawn i'm going to shift my camera here to the left so you guys can see what I'm going to be talking about because we're going to be talking about a lot of things here and I'm going to be clicking stuff and I want you guys to make sense of what I'm doing. So if we look at the base stats of what this guy has, they say he's an HP character and they say he's HP because most likely because of the aura guys. But honestly, he really is a defensive character because how he benefits in his skills but by stacking defense so i want you guys to keep mind of that but we're going to talk about the base stats and go into the skills his hp is really nice it's at 21k his attack is actually fairly low his defense is really high it's at 1343 which is amazing his speed is over 100 which is good he's at 103 he has 15 crit rate he has a uh, crit damage of uh, 50 percent which is cool and his resist is actually 50 and he actually has no accuracy that's the only downside here when it comes to this character uh when it comes to building because you're actually going to need to focus a little bit on accuracy guys so that's super important but overall his kit is really nice i really do like that he has uh hp and defense speed and uh, he actually has a decent amount of resist which is good um so you don't have to worry too much about it in that case but let's get into what we're going to be talking about and it's his skills and that's going to decide how we build the character and you can actually build this character a few ways guys this is more of a guide to give you an idea of what to build i am not telling you build it this way i don't think i don't believe that when it comes to this game there are some characters that you do need to do that but then there's a lot of other characters that you can uh you can cater it to it as long as you get the primary stats so let's look at his a1 feast of flame level one attacks one enemy heals this champion by 20 percent of the damage inflicted heals this champion by 50 percent of the damage inflicted instead uh if the target is under an hp burn debuff so it's really nice in regards that he has a lifesteal in essence guys this is absolutely amazing um to have this capability and it's based off defense so the more tankier you make him the stronger he's going to be doing on damage and then you could uh spec into it to increase the damage output by 20 percent which is really good i do like that he heals for 50 percent if something is under uh you know uh, uh hp burn which is gonna also uh, make us decide when we start going into the traits into the uh, trees or whatever to go into the uh the support tree to increase the the debuff aspect if we wanted to do that so this is a really good a1 guys with my build on items and artifacts i actually did not go lifesteal uh people do go lifesteal for it but because he has this the way i pictured it was i wanted to uh stack accuracy defense and uh anything else i could find in order to help him with hp and stuff so this is a really good A1, guys. It's basically a lifesteal. Now, if we go to the A2, attacks all enemies and has a 75%, you could spec it in to be 100% of placing an HP burn debuff on all enemies for three turns. This is what is going to help that A1 increase that 50% of damage inflicted for healing. Uh, it's a really good skill. Now, this champion is superb 
absolutely incredible on spider guys he dominates and when you're looking to build uh you know some type of team for spider you're usually looking for people that have turn meter and hp burn is so good because the amount of spiders there's 10 spiders so every time they go up they burn everything they burn all the enemies including the boss and it does a bunch of damage we're gonna see that later on because i'm gonna do a run on that so he has an aoe hp burn instant guaranteed as long as you have good accuracy guys uh and if we're going to be doing spider we're going to definitely want to have at least 200 accuracy guys so this is a really good a2 now he has infernal min minions for his love his a3 which basically you can reduce the cooldown to three turns and it puts an ally protection on all the enemies and it puts a 60 percent increased defense buff on all allies for two turns this is really good because this is a defensive champion where if you make him really tanky he's going to help the the rest of the team live so this is a really good thing especially with spider and i'll explain more as we go down but just to give you the idea it's because when you're trying to make a level 20 spider attack someone they're going to go for the force affinity first unless there's a huge hp difference gap where something's about to die they don't swap uh they usually go for the force affinity so by putting this ally protect with a 60% increased defense, you're really helping your team live. Um, so it's definitely like this, this guy really helps not only with damage output, but for survivability to help the team try to get through uh, spider. So this guy's kit for spider is almost like the ideal thing on what you want with someone with an HP burn. It is really good. If he would have had something like Weaken, that would have been even incredible as well. But I definitely do love the fact that he's a defensive champion. He gets a def defensive buff and also uh, puts ally protect on the rest of the team. Definitely helps. You see Spy uh, Sky in the background uh, just checking, roaming around, making sure everything is cool. So those are the skill sets. Lifesteal, AoE, HP burn, defense 60% with an ally protect to absorb some of the damage that, that our friends take. And then we have the passive, decreases damage inflicted by enemies under HP burn debuffs by 10%. So not only does he do that, it's almost like an attack down 10%. That's the best way to explain it, I guess. It's a, it's really amazing, guys. So he has a lot on his plate to really help the team out. And then the aura to increase HP in all battles by 25%. That's pretty cool. I would have liked it to be... Uh, well, I mean, either or. HP is good. It could have been defense as well as the aura, but it's really nice because with the lifesteal, having a bigger HP pool uh, definitely does help to kind of continue to go up and stuff. So that is the maximum stats in regards to his baseline for uh, the Tyrant. Always, guys, I recommend when uh, you're trying to see what the base stats for a six-star Ascended Champion is, definitely go into the index. Don't go into your champion uh, inventory because that's not going to tell you the truth of what they're going to look like because then you can do comparisons and analysis on other characters so now let's go into how i built the character with these items now guys there's a bunch of ways that you can build him you can build him with a lot of speed and defense you can build him with uh obviously you need some accuracy in order to be over there um so you know you build them with a defensive set they even got the new defensive sets that they have in the forge area um i accidentally clicked the chat but like over here like if i wanted something i would have loved to have something like this maybe uh hp hp defense 10 percent uh this resilience set is really good there's a few options you guys have when it comes to this even this set perception is absolutely amazing guys but i went with the stats that i was able to have that i already had available for me so i kind of built him that way but there's a lot of ways that you can build him as long as it has uh you know maybe accuracy just to get you over that 200 hill if you need it hp defense priority first then hp uh and then you can kind of go from there so there's some items here you can actually utilize which is really nice those are the three i would go either for set deflection set resilience or set perception when it comes to the forge when it comes to building things but the way i built them i'll show you right now I did a regular baseline accuracy because we needed the 40% accuracy to kind of go over the hilt or whatever uh, at the time of when I was building him. And then the stats actually weren't bad. We got some speed out of it. We got some HP and uh, crit damage isn't this is the way I built him. 
I built him with crit damage, but the baseline that I would suggest for you to build him, guys, is defense percentage, HP percentage, then accuracy and speed. Those are going to be the primary stats you're going to care about. Anything else will kind of follow suit. Now, because I knew I was building him for Spider, instead of having the main stat for gloves being like HP percent, which you can do, I went to crit rate. And the reason that is, is because I didn't go for a lifesteal set. So I wanted him to hit as hard as possible to get as much health back. So that's the reason why I went crit rate, guys, uh, just to give you an idea about it. So just explaining that, you could go as an alternative, you can go HP percentage here. And then if you wanted to go uh, instead of crit damage here, you could go defense to increase the damage output a little more. So it wouldn't be a crit heavy uh, character, it'd be more of a survivability character, uh, but you wouldn't be critting to get a lot of heal back. So that's kind of the thing that's different from a lot of builds that you can see when it comes to the Tyrant. So I did that, I went for the basic, yo, give me crit to let me do more damage and increase my crit damage. But let's go from the, let's just go through the loop so you guys can see, but I wanted to give you some ideas of what I was thinking and uh, the essence behind it. So baseline stat for the weapon is always gonna be attack similar to the top three. It's gonna be helm, HP, and then defense for the shield, but it gave resistance and HP and accuracy. So I really like that it had HP, accuracy, and speed, and it got resistance as well, just to have something like the more we can actually make him more tankier, if he gets something, the better it is. But HP, accuracy, and speed sealed the deal for me here. So that's why I went with this set, just to get the also the double set bonus for the 40%, 40 accuracy. Now, if we go here into the helmet, we see obviously the base stat is HP, but we went HP percent, then we went defense flat rate, not the best thing, guys. If I was going for something, I would have wanted defensive percentage. Obviously, we go for percentages versus flat rate. Then uh, it had speed, which was amazing, and then it was like crit damage. So I really did love that it had HP and speed, and it had some form of defense on it. So I was content with that. Uh, so I basically was like, okay, I'm going to work with it. And the set bonus, the two set bonus of the 50% defense here is going to really help let me i'm sorry guys i just realized that my camera also was blocking this section so let me just go back so in regards to this hp accuracy speed sealed the deal for this over here hp speed and some form of defense helped over here so that's why i was happy with that and the set bonus is really nice for these two items right here so then we went to defense Speed was awesome, HP was awesome. They gave us another form of HP and I was like, okay. I would have loved defense percentage at this point. It would have been really good. Now we go here. This was what I was talking about earlier with the crit rate gloves, guys. Uh, this, uh, you can go HP percentage. I went 40% crit rate. I mean, if I had better gloves, I would have went for the 5%. But I did like that the double set bonus gave uh, HP 15% to get give something more. So in a sense, we're getting more HP here. So it's really nice. It gave us some accuracy in HP and speed. So I was content with this overall. Um, but if you wanted to build them a different way without crit damage and crit rate, like I said, you could replace this with HP percentage and you can replace the neck piece with uh, an HP per a defense percent, or not defense percent, but defense flat rate as the main stat. That would be a good thing to go as well, guys. But I wanted that A1 to do so much damage to lifesteal and heal us back up. So accuracy and speed with the set bonus really made me happy here. Same thing over here. When you're going for the neck, uh, the, the chest piece, you're going to go for defense percentage, guys. That's what you're going to go to kind of make him tankier to get it to go to a really high number, almost basically double or over his flat base stat to really like increase his output. What I liked about this was that it had HP speed attack is bs for us that was a horrible roll for us but everything else was kind of nice and we did have crit damage increase because if you look at our crit damage it's also at 69 percent added on top of it so it's really good to have that 
Then when we went to the boots, these were the boots that I had for speed on defense, so I was definitely going to give him these. Uh, it gives more accuracy, it gives resistance, it gives crit damage, and it gives a little bit more crit rate to kind of help us there, guys. So it was really nice. Um, now we go over here to the ring. Ring, you're going to go HP, uh, you know, obviously HP is the main one. Then you can go HP percentage, defense percentage. And then if you could get some flat rates or anything like that, that would be really nice in regards to other stuff besides attack. But I did like that we already got 15% HP and 4% defense it was something to work with i would have liked the rolls to be on the defensive side but it still helps them become tanky enough so this was a decent ring for the most part but you're going to want to go hp defense then maybe hp flat or defense flat uh because you're going hp as the main stat flat you're going to have to probably roll for something that's like defense flat now when we're going to the next thing here for the neck piece like i said guys you can roll uh, defense or HP here, and it's perfectly fine depending on what you need more. Instead, if you didn't want to do crit damage, but then you go, you know, you go defense, you go resistance, you go HP, uh, accuracy. You can you can replace this accordingly to how you want it. So if we go to like upgrade really quick, and let's see, not, and we go to this. And we go to the amulet real quick. You can either get HP or defense as the main stat. And then after that, you can decide whether you go HP, defense, accuracy, and resist. You can kind of go with those type of items and it's per perfectly fine. Uh, so I would suggest doing those uh, if you weren't going the route that I was going. But I loved having crit damage. Then after that, I just went for HP and defense. And... You know getting accuracy or resist as long as you don't get anything that's attack that's perfectly fine now we did those and finally guys the banner you're going to go accuracy you're always going to go accuracy when you're trying to put a debuff on a character so go for an accuracy banner after that you just try to find defense and hp and speed and you're pretty much good there let me see what else you can find there so i could help you guys so I, you're definitely going to always want to go accuracy, guys. So if you're going to go for something after that, getting HP percentage, defense percentage, and speed, and then you can get a flat HP or defense, that's perfectly fine. As long as you don't get anything that's attack based, then you're kind of in the clear here. But the percentages would be really nice first, minus attack. Just scrap anything that says attack on any of these, and then you would just basically have a good banner as long as it's an accuracy banner, guys. And then that's basically what we did for a build uh, in regards to the, the items. So I did double set accuracy to get 40 accuracy, get a 15% defense bonus, and also get a 15% HP and heals 3% every turn, guys. That's that's the set bonuses I went for. But like I said, you can go for other ones as well. Because there's obviously other items that you can roll with. Uh, that help with defense. That help with speed. If you did want to go that route, guys. If you did find good defensive main stats. That you don't really want to go for that. There's i uh, I'm trying to see what else you can go for. That would kind of help you guys here. But that would be a really, this is a really nice set that I did. I definitely did. Also, if you did do some type of counter attack, it's not bad in the sense that, I mean, but we're doing him for Spider. He's not going to get counter attacked. So I don't, I don't really see too much merit on that, guys. Uh, but his A1 would be healing him if someone's HP burned. You know what I'm saying? So it, in a sense, it's like he's getting healed again, healed again. I'd rather find a teammate that does counter attack and stuff like that. So, you know, this is the Immortal set that we actually got a two-piece from for the 3% each turn. But I really cared about the HP 15% uh, that I liked. Um, then, yeah, you could do something like, you know, this if you wanted to, a speed thing. The Resilience set is nice, but I didn't get any good uh, rolls. I saw, like, you see, that was a flat defense. But, like, you could also go for this and it would have been fine. Now... That was the build I did for him when it comes to the items. Now, if we go into the masteries, this is the important part, guys. So, 
just kind of going really quick you get plus 10 accuracy here heals this champion by 10 percent the first time when he kills something then increases accuracy by four for each enemy alive stacks up to 16 so that helps with the guaranteed definitely doing an hp burn there uh increases the base status set bonuses artifacts increases base stats by 15 percent this is multiplicative not additive so this is just an artifact boost increase here uh then there's the decrease of the turn meter if it's an aoe attack it's going to do five percent if it's one it's going to be 20 percent meter and then this master hexer is the main reason why i went for it has a 30 percent chance to extend the duration of any debuff by one turn so because we can do that with hp burn it's really nice guys uh so that's the reason why i went down the support tree gave a little bit of accuracy and it gave master hexer i think master hexer is amazing when you can debuff someone so then we did deadly precision we increased the crit rate by five percent we did crit damage 10 percent uh increased damage inflicted five percent when hp is full we could do that for the most part but i mean he's going to be doing ally protect so it's only going to be when we're going to be healing ourselves and then afterwards if there's no damage then we're good uh so you can kind of decide whether you want to do that or something because you could still go down these trees with the required crit damage and then maybe pick something else but that was like the best option there uh increased damage inflicted by six percent when attacking targets with higher max hp definitely because we're doing spider uh increases damage inflicted by champions default skill by two percent stacks up to 10 because we're going to be doing that a1 a lot there in spider we definitely went down that right route, route and then after that every time you kill someone you you know you get a certain percentage it stacks up to to basically 12 which is a really good thing on doing damage output when you're killing people and there goes my camera in you know dealing with issues again so but you're seeing me click it so you're kind of getting to see what the stats are for the most part so i definitely do like that uh after that we uh we did war master so has a 60 percent chance of inflicting damage bonus uh, and then it basically you hit them it does a percentage of the the enemy's hp which is absolutely amazing guys this is like obviously if you're doing an a1 and you're trying to do, you're trying to do bosses this is what you're going to go for you're going to definitely want to go for war master here and because we're doing spider that's where we're going to go and what route we're going to choose so this is the tree that i did i just wanted to show you this picture really quick so you guys can get an idea of the build that we went for and now like I could kind of talk about a little bit about arena and what you can do and you know what are some of the thoughts when it comes to to using the tyrant now you can do the tyrant a few ways okay i personally because i have tormin tormin works really well with hp burn so if you get a really tanky team you can do some really cool stuff so like I could probably go full freeze and see if we could actually like basically take this uh this team down which i'm gonna try to move my camera now which i've been dealing with issues of boom i'm just gonna move it over here and you know you basically have two people that freeze and then you have one person that hp burns and shimari also heals so it's a really good thing so let's give this a shot guys so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And we have uh, Sir Frankenstein to keep it tanky for us. So we're going to do a freeze. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do it. So they're frozen now. So instead of putting the ally protect, I'm just going to straight up go for Hellfire Tournament. Tournament. There we go. So now this dude's going to start going crazy whenever... We're going to go for a nuke. Let's see. Can I do a provoke? There we go. I'm going to place a heal. Just because. He's freezing them. So that HP burn with Tormund's freeze. Basically, whenever someone is frozen with Tormund and they have HP burn... When they're about to attack, obviously they're not because they're frozen, uh, Tormund instantly auto-attacks. And that's why I love matching up an HP burn with Tormund because it's pretty badass. So what I could do here is I could do another HP burn or 
I could do an ally protect just for safety purposes. Which is fine. I could do a stun really quick. You're going to hear Sky in the background. And he already killed them. So now we're just going to auto and finish it. So that's a perfect example of Arena, just kind of using the Tyrant, which is really fun to play with. I definitely do love um, having him. So I just wanted to show a combination if you did with uh, like free characters that freeze and then mix them up with Tormin. You could do some really cool stuff. Like Tyrant, like any HP burn character with freezing is really nice. With stunning, with anything is just overall really good because obviously they're going to get burned. And each one is going to get burned by a certain amount of percent. So if it's you're dealing with five people... Sky baby, Sky. Don't you see we doing content, bruh? Sky's like oh, going crazy. She heard something. I'm sorry, guys, but you're gonna hear her go through it. Um, so basically, like if you mix them with, if you mix a HP burn character with anyone that stuns, they're really good in that sense. Stun, freeze, whatever. Uh, sleep, I'm not too sure of because I think they might wake up. So with all right guys so we are gonna do a spider run so you guys can see what it's about uh definitely with hp burn characters they're really amazing when it comes to this so that's why i love displaying i'll i'll love to display tyrant to see what to show you what he's about but basically we have shiramani to aoe freeze all the spiders then he's going to be applying the hp burn that's going to be the majority of the damage output for this fight and then we have cold heart to do turn meter drops to at least get more uh damage output before the spider heals for a quick one uh the spider usually does one quick because we only have one turn meter drop here which is cold heart we don't have another turn meter if we did have another turn meter drop we probably like rosin or something like that we might be able to get a kill but uh rosin's uh turn meter down for us isn't at the 200 mark for accuracy we're still building him up but bellinor puts a week in which also does significant damage on the enemy and that's pretty much it so we're gonna also have that speed buff from uh scar torsus which is really good so let's see how this works guys you guys can see this definitely if you appreciate this content hit that subscribe button leave a like leave a comment let me know what you guys think but whenever you're dealing with an hp burn aoe character you're definitely going to want to think about wanting them for spider if you don't have one yet but now you're going to see all the hp burn look at the health slowly but surely tick away because each spider is trying to go and either they're frozen or they're, they're actually attacking you see that every time that shake happens that 166k that was cold heart doing the turn meter down there's Shiromani helping Scar Torsus out because he, uh, he's struggling right now. And that now we're going to deal with an absorption. Let's see. Okay. It wasn't that bad of an absorption. So you're going to see that Tyrant's actually... If he's the only one that's living, he's going to be the one that's going to actually finish the match. Because not only is he tanking... He, uh, he's gonna put the HP burn, which is really nice. So let's see. Nice heal. You see how he healed himself? Like, we don't really have that much issues when it comes to that. Okay, so that was the first attack. And then this HP burn is gonna basically wrap it up. You see how much like he, it, the damage does and he's just getting hit and it's like nothing. We could do another one so you guys could see what's up. And that's basically like the tyrant basically makes it pretty much guaranteed with uh with Cold Heart and Shiromani to kind of freeze things. Because it's this beginning that's amazing. Good stuff. And the and Shiromani went so quick for the freeze again. That's, that's pretty nice. Good stuff. It's not going to be a lot of a heal. It's going to be a heal, but not a lot. There we go. Now, did Scar Torsus already use the rebirth? I don't know. Probably. Ah, there's the rebirth, okay. So now we're just waiting for Tyrant to put the HP burn on all these guys. 
And then we're gonna be able to end the match. Good freeze. Alright, and that's it. So that's basically Tyrant, guys. Tyrant is absolutely amazing. I love using this character. Like, this character is basically making the runs now just uh, basically guaranteed for Spider and stuff. Who I used to use before Tyrant was I used to use uh, Gaelic. Uh, where is he? Let me see, I think he's in the vault, so I gotta say, by rank. Yeah, I was using Ultimate Gaelic because it's the same concept with HP burn. So, I hope you guys got some enjoyment, some, uh, some information out of this. Sorry that I had to move the camera a few times. I had to adjust it a bit because we're touching every se separate section. I might need to disable the camera every time we have these conversations. But uh, let me know who you guys want to see next as a champion. And I'll definitely be sure to check out if I have them available to actually do them. Alright, thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. See you guys. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time here and you're watching from YouTube, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you ever come to Twitch, definitely be sure to hit that follow button. Come join us on Discord. The link is below in the YouTube description. Also, last but not least, I want to say major, major, major shout outs to the sponsors. If you guys also wanted to financially support the stream, definitely be sure to check out that YouTube description below. There is a Patreon link. And if you can't support financially, don't worry, guys. There's other ways you can actually show support. That's getting the word out, sharing the content, letting friends and loved ones know about this uh this channel tell them to come and hang out come join us on discord you will not regret it it's the best community slash family ever it says it right there on the freaking board yo thank you guys so much for hanging out i love you guys so much and i will catch you guys next time let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next what you think about the video and so on i'll catch you guys next time see ya